Hey, it's Ted McGrath, and in today's video, I want to share with you how to present powerfully from the stage. I'm going to give you what I call the four C's right now on how to do that. And number one is confront, number two is connect, and I'll tell you what three and four are in just a moment. So let's start off with number one. You know, a lot of times people want to go speak and they want to go get on a stage, but there's a little bit of fear there that they don't have anything powerful to say, or there's a little bit of fear there of what will people think of me, or there's a little bit of fear there of like, I'm not going to connect with my audience. So one of the most important things you can do when you go out there and you get on stage is that you got to be able to confront the audience. Um, I know one of the first speeches I ever gave, I was like 20 something years old, and I got up there in front of a room full of like 40 people, and I couldn't confront the audience. So I was literally like talking, um, because I had my speech memorized, and I was talking to myself, but I was pacing back and forth, pacing back and forth. And it was literally like pacing, 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 pacing. And I, I wasn't even looking at the audience. And I didn't realize until later on in my life that that means I'm not confronting, right? Um, I couldn't confront the audience, like I was looking that way, that way, but never here. So one of the first things you can do when you walk out on stage is actually confront the audience. Like literally stand there, um, get grounded, and just look at them. And just be there with them for like five seconds. It will seem like an eternity. It will seem like a lifetime. Um, you might be standing there silent for five seconds and people are going like, what's going on? But if you're just here and you're like, all right, so I'm excited to be here today with you. Today I'm gonna to talk about this, right? So that's the moment of just confronting to just like look at everybody um, realize that you are speaking to somebody, you're speaking to people in the audience. You're not in your head, you're speaking to people in the audience. So if you start to put your attention on them, and then you're there and you literally confront them by being there, um, you're gonna get more comfortable automatically. The worst mistake you can make is you just stay in your head and you start thinking, what do I say, what do I say? And then literally you're having a conversation with yourself, you're not having a conversation with anybody. Um, when you start talking to yourself in your head and trying to remember what I'm supposed to say, when you're confronting, you're seeing them, your attention's on them, so then you can have the intention to actually deliver to them. Um, but if you don't do that, if you don't confront them and have your attention on them, um, then ultimately, like, your attention's on you, and you're just having a conversation with yourself, which really isn't communicating. So the first step is just confront and be there. Um, the second step is connect. So um, one of the things you might want to do in a presentation is connect by asking a question. Um, just getting somebody to communicate back to you is, is an element of connection. See, I could get up and I could just start talking and giving a presentation, or I could start connecting with you and ask, asking you questions. So um, when you get up in front of an audience, you can literally go like, how many of you are here today in the audience, um, you know, want to, are here because you're interested in finding your passion? And if you're in a room where people are there about finding their passion, clearly they're gonna say yes, you know? So you want to ask a question that's going to create engagement where everybody's going to respond. So you're like, how many of you here like really want to go deeper into your passion? They're like, yes. You know, if like the topic of the workshop is like finding your passion, you might go like, how many of you are here today because you really want to go deeper into your passion? They're like, yeah, right? How many of you are here today because you have a dream inside of you? Yeah. You know, how many of you are here today because you feel like there might be something that's blocking you that's in the way? Yeah. So what you're doing there is you're connecting with people right off the bat. And that connection is going to actually make you more comfortable. Make sense? So that connection is gonna make you more comfortable. Another technique for connecting is just get down into the audience. I think a lot of times as a speaker, we go out, you know, we're up on this stage and we're up on this pedestal and you hear a lot from people like, you know, the authority is like you're up on the stage and they see you as this authority. Um, but you know, here's the thing, like if you're a good speaker and you're real and authentic with people, um, you don't need to be this big king authority. They're gonna know you're great by just the presentation, the content you're giving them. So walking off the stage um, into the audience is a way to create another form of connection. And sometimes it might feel scary, but like walking in and looking at people, looking at them in the eyes and connecting with them, um, all of a sudden you're connected. So when you're in a place of confront, where you're confronting, when you're in a place of connection, all of a sudden um, you'll be more authentically yourself and it, things will come a lot more natural to you, okay? So that's a really important piece of um, actually delivering a powerful presentation because how can you deliver something that's really powerful um, if one, you're not there and you haven't confronted the space yet? Two, how can you really 
um, how can people really feel what you are presenting to them if they're not connected to you, okay? Another element of connection um, is story, right? So story is a great way to connect with people because if I share a story with you um, that captivates you in the areas of vulnerability and also credibility, meaning if I tell you a story of my life, like you've probably heard my story many times, if, or maybe you're brand new and you haven't, but you know, when I was 21 years old, the night I cracked six figures um, in income, uh, I was face down on the kitchen floor overdosing from a bag of cocaine, two pills of ecstasy, and 15 drinks of alcohol, and my soul was coming out of the top of my head. Now, that vulnerability of what I'm sharing, that's personal. It's something that I'm sharing from my life. Now, a lot of times people go, well, Ted, I don't have this extreme story like you of almost death. That's not the point of a story. The point of a story is just to be real and raw. The point of a story is just to share some situation in your life where, um, you know, you were feeling a certain way. I could go, you know, the day I got that phone call, um, you know, from my boss, and, and he was like, you know, I don't, I don't think this is gonna work out anymore. And, um, you know, I'm sitting there and I, I, I'm crushed. I'm like, I, I've poured everything into this. Like, uh, I've set my life on this. My family's depending on me. And, and, you know, there I am wondering, like, what am I gonna do with my life? I mean, that's not an extreme moment right there, right? That's simply like a phone call and you got some bad news, but the questioning that's going on, like, I wonder, what am I gonna do with the rest of my life? Notice the tone, like, what am I gonna do with my life? Like, what do I do now, I'm lost. The tone, the question, the presence brings us into that vulnerability. So it doesn't matter whether I'm there and I'm going, you know, man, like, the sky is just, dark gray right now. It's like I just, I don't know if it's ever gonna clear up. Sometimes I wonder, like, will I ever see the sun again? I'm talking about the sky, I'm talking about the freaking weather. But notice the tone, notice the presence, notice the introspection of like, I'm wondering, I'm feeling, I'm questioning. That brings us to a vulnerable moment. So when you're going to connect with an audience, and even captivate your audience, which is the third C, captivation first starts from that element of connection. It starts to come through connection. Like, if you're connecting with me on a personal level, not only are you connecting, you're captivating me, you're pulling me in, you're drawing me into you, and the, the, the divide's not there anymore. See, oftentimes an audience will put a divide up, and what they'll do is um, they'll judge, and they'll be critics. And they'll, like, they'll be like, ah, I don't need to listen to this guy. Like a lot of times people are like that. If I see a speaker on stage and I don't know him, um, I, I'm like that. I, I catch my voice going on like, okay, who is this guy? Why am I gonna listen to this guy? And, and I don't see the opportunity. I'll just see the problem or the judging that I'm doing. So I've learned when that comes up, it's like to wait, give the person an opportunity so I can really hear where they're coming from. And I give them some leeway on stage to like connect with me and tell me a story that's going to actually get me to connect with them. Um, and so once I've started connecting with them and sharing vulnerability, then I start pulling them in and captivating them with more and more of my life story, more and more of the results that I've accomplished in my life. Because part of captivation in a presentation comes from results. And it comes from sharing like what's possible. So if you wanna captivate people, you can either tell stories about other people um, who've gotten results and that'll captivate them, or you can tell stories about your life um, where you've gotten results and that will captivate them. Because once they've connected, then the results of what's possible captivates them, right? And that's really strong. It's really powerful if that's what you do. So, um, you know, I want you to really get into the habit of um, getting into your presentations and following this formula of like connecting with your story, connecting with the audience, captivating them with results, and also captivating them by your expression. See, one of the things that captivates is if you're passionate, if you're free, your audience is gonna be free. And nothing captivates better than emotion. So as you're crafting a presentation, I always think about stories that can bring out emotion, but I also think of how I need to be. Like if you think about a certain situation, there's certain ways you need to be in a presentation. 
So if I'm teaching you something, I need to be instructional. I need to be step by step and I need to get to the point. So when I'm teaching, I'm more linear, I'm more step by step and I'm focused on a goal, a target. Like I'm gonna teach you this, boom. Teach you this, boom. Teach you this, boom. When, when I'm telling a story, my beingness is different. My beingness is I'm just feeling present and I'm feeling here with you right now and there's no goal for me to get to, there's just a journey for me to take you along. That's a different beingness, right? Like if you wanna get somewhere, your energy's different, you're like boom, 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 right? If you wanna go on a journey, right, I'm, go I'm on this journey, it's almost like a seeking journey, like the story is a journey that somebody gets taken on. It's, a, it's kind of a flowing, present uh, experience that somebody's having. So your beingness is different when you're telling a story versus when you're instructional and teaching. If you're gonna make a call to action and you wanna get somebody to do something, the way you captivate them is through command and being directional. See, by the time you get to the end of the presentation, if you've confronted the audience, if you've connected with them, and if you've captivated them by showing them what's possible and teaching them, it's time to be directive when you get to the end. It's like, that's when you bring in the, the beingness of command and you bring command into your call to action. That's the 4C, command into your call to action. So you're very directional. You're very like, this is what you need to do right now. Click this button, go to the back of the room, and you bring that type of energy because you've earned it. You've connected with them, you've captivated them. Um, they know you're a pro, and you gotta bring it at that point. So that type of energy is powerful. Um, it's a beingness that's like, yes, I own this stage. And for some of you, that's uncomfortable. And it's only gonna be uncomfortable if you don't activate the other areas of confront because how are you gonna to get to the end and make a call to action and be like, I own the stage if you haven't confronted the audience? You don't own shit, right? You own nothing, right? Because you haven't confronted them. So the only thing you're doing in, at the end of making a call to action and through command is like, you're commanding yourself like to go to the back of the room. That's why nobody will buy because you haven't confronted the audience. You haven't connected, you don't have the right. You don't have the right to tell them what to do because there's no connection. If you haven't captivated them on what's possible, um, no matter how strong you are in your command, they're not gonna follow because they don't see what's possible. So the end, when you come in with the command of call to action, you've earned that right if you've done the other three C's. If you haven't, you're screwed, right? And that's why people blank. That's why people don't get people to buy their products online. That's why people don't get people to, to go to the back of the room in a seminar. It's like, it's you don't, you, if you don't do it, if you don't own the stage, then people don't respect you. And you have to at that point go, I'm the authority. See, when you first step on, you're earning the right to be the authority. It doesn't matter what you think. It doesn't matter how many times you've been on a stage before, you're earning the right to gain the authority in the room. You're earning the right to be their teacher. You're earning the right to be their coach. Never forget that. At the end, if you've done your job, you've earned the right. You tell them what to do, okay? And you be specific. Because if they don't know what to do and you're not specific, they're not gonna do anything, right? So these are the ways that I look at, you know, the four C's that I just, just uh, shared with you is confront, connect, um, captivate, and then command with the call to action at the end, okay? If you do those four things, your presentations are gonna be powerful. And you'll notice a lot of this, I give you some techniques, but a lot of this is just, it's your beingness of how you're showing up and bringing out different versions of yourself on stage when you need to do that, okay? So just know, um, in the beginning, it's more about like being there in the connection. At the end, it's more about like, you know, you're the authority, all right? So I hope this serves you. Um, I'm certainly looking forward to seeing you in the next video and go out and apply this. Like, take what I've taught you today and on your next presentation, ask yourself the question like, okay, when I get up there, um, think in your mind, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna stand there for five seconds or three seconds if five's too long and just start looking at people and just planting your roots and being like, okay, I'm connecting now to the stage, I'm confronting the audience. You know, the second question I have is, how are you going to connect with people? Are you gonna ask like three questions, like I said before, of like how many of you in the room are passionate? How many of the room, you know, have a challenge interface? Like, are you gonna ask questions and engage there? Are you gonna walk off the stage and look people in the eye and connect with the audience by not being separate and actually going out? Are you gonna connect through story? Like, do you have a, a vulnerable story of your own personal story that you can share a vulnerable moment like I shared with you how to do it in this video? So get, get clear on how you're gonna do it um, because you can have the structure of a presentation but if you're not clear of how you're gonna do it, you're not gonna succeed. And then how are you gonna captivate? Are you really clear on what are the results that you're going to be offering up to your customers when you get on that stage? Like, 
You may have a framework of a presentation and you're teaching stuff, but are you clear on the outcome and the result that's going to captivate their attention to go, I want that? And then finally, for the call to action, um, how do you need to show up in that moment? Like, there might be another level of you that needs to come out, and at that point go, you know, I don't care what people think of me at this point. Like, because I've earned the right to do this. So at this point, still, if somebody's thinking negatively, I don't want them, right? So you need to really let go of the people in the room who might still be judgmental, and you need to make a decision like, this is how I'm gonna show up. I'm gonna be me, but I'm gonna be me in a powerful, authoritative way. And that's how you're gonna rock it, okay? So I hope this serves you, and I'll see you in one of the next videos.